we start to look at our skin as a canvas, I see my skin and I think, there's prime real estate. The thing I love the most about them is that they are there forever. Because nothing else really is. Almost like a bluey grey. Yeah. OK. I love it. Cool. They're beautiful. There's quite a beautiful art. Increasingly popular. His jacket's amazing, right? For some, a tattoo is the most exciting decision of their life. For others, it brings a lifetime of regret. If you had your time over, would you get those tattoos again? No. Absolutely not. I had to get them off or I was just going to drive myself nuts. You should really think about where you put them. <laughs> really make sure you like them. Well, I'm eventually going to get a whole back piece that's going to be kind of Alice in Wonderland themed, but I'm going to get the little white rabbit first. Once TV presenter Ruby Rose was fresh-faced and uninked. But to her, her flawless skin was virgin territory. Ruby's first tattoo was not so much an act of rebellion, but a statement of self. I was getting bullied at school, and so I had all these people had a really bad, abusive time. And so it was like, I didn't feel like I owned my body, and I wanted to reclaim it. And that's what that original tattoo stood for. Yeah, that's my tram stamp, guys. It's yes. It is funny when people ask me how many tattoos I have because I, I actually don't know. I would say, <clears throat> I would say almost 30, maybe. So I've been in this position before. <laughs> Getting a tattoo. Because <laughs> I've got, you know, a trust in God tattoo that I, I always look at when things are going a bit difficult. I've got a Dankeschön, which is German for thank you. And then I've got funny ones, like I've got Astro Boy. And I've got a Ninja Turtle. All right, you ready? I'm ready. And we're off. Today, in the same LA parlour Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie frequent, Ruby is getting the white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland tattooed on her back. He reminds me of my life. Like, he's never stopping, he's always late. I think the tattoos have absolutely skyrocketed. There's no denying that they've become a lot more popular amongst, you know, the younger demographic especially. You're watching this whole group of people that are young doing things that are going to be permanent and I don't think we're used to that. Hello. Hey, Georgia, how you going? Good, how are you? Six days after her 18th birthday... I've designed you three different yeah. designs. Georgia Triple A is getting her first tattoo. I love that one. You love that one? Yeah, definitely. So I love like that, that yeah. Fantastic. It costs $300 and will take two hours. Once the design is on her skin, her skin is ready for the ink. I'm getting a daffodil with the purple on because daffodils are a symbol for hope. Okay. And uh, my little brother's got cancer, so this just makes it that much special. OK, now we're ready to go. Mum, Dad, the whole family approve. My only concern was um, where she put it. I think you've got to be a bit careful, you know, for future. She, you know, it's fine now she wants to be a hairdresser. What if she changes and where she works doesn't allow tattoos? So, apart from that, that was really my only concern. Damn, don't touch me. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. The funniest story I think I ever have is I had a couple walk in and the guy asked for his girlfriend's name across his ribs and so I started tattooing him and as soon as I had finished, his girlfriend looked at it, loved it and said, I know you've been cheating on me and walked straight out the door. Funniest day of my life, I think. OK. Oh, that was so painful. So what do you think of the tattoo, Sammy? You like that I kind of got it in your honour? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I can't be a hypocrite here. I got one when I was 16. I'm absolutely covered in them. Oh, my God, that is amazing. I love it. But honestly, they can stop you from getting jobs. Oh, that is just perfect. If you're 18 and you, you want to be a singer and you go and get a whole lot of tattoos, but then you end up realising you're going to be a secretary and you can't have tattoos for that job, it can affect your life pretty badly. I just like the way they looked. I thought the whole tough guy tattoo image was just cool. You were uh, an easy man to find with those tattoos on your face and neck. Uh, yeah, well, I stuck out like a turd in a punch bowl. So, yeah, I, I, was, I stuck out really well. <laughs> an angry teenager 
Brian Widner became an even angrier racist. When I was 15, I got hate tattooed across my knuckles there. I always liked the word hate. I thought it was real cool at the time. He founded the Vinlanders Social Club, a notorious skinhead gang. I was an enforcer. I, um, that was my job, was to maim people. I never stopped and checked for pulses. I'm just going to leave it at that. Does that mean you could have killed someone? The potential is there. Did you kill anyone? I can't answer that. At the time, I, it felt powerful. It felt great. That's, that was what I wanted. I wanted everybody to be afraid of me. I wanted everybody to veer away from me, um, to know that I'd bite. And then he met Julie, a single mother with her own racist past. I actually met Julia at a Ku Klux Klan rally. <laughs> hey, okay. <laughs> hey, it works. Uh, there was a concert going on in uh, Kentucky, and she was there. And did he stand out to you? He was cute. <laughs> he looked insane. They fell in love, got married, had a son. And along the way, his hate began to wither. What changed? My heart changed. Once I had a wife and kids, I, I couldn't see myself doing it anymore. I couldn't do it anymore. Though they threatened to kill him, Brian quit the gang, pledging to live a better life. But those years had left their indelible mark. It just got to the point where it's, where it's like I had to get him off or I was just going to drive myself nuts. I'm Dr. Shack. Nice, nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. I told him from the beginning, you know, it's going to take a long time because there's a lot of ink in there and it's going to take a long time to get out of it. A tattooist's needle punctures the skin at up to 3,000 times a minute, injecting industrial strength ink into the dermis, the skin's second layer, which is why tattoos are so difficult to erase. Brian would need 25 agonizing operations. Hey, we can space these at your convenience. You know, I know you probably have a job, have to go to work, have things you got to do. Actually, uh, we moved down here in March, and because of these, I haven't been able to find a yeah, job. Yeah, well, I, hopefully yeah. we can get that situation yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> that hurt? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me that local anesthetic, man. It's just a tender oh. spot there. I'm going to give you the alcohol pad. When we treated his whole face and neck, he would just swell up like a basketball after each of these treatments. And all this, you know, left his face raw and, and like the worst sunburn you've ever seen. The doctor said it would feel like the worst sunburn I've ever felt in my life. Right now, it feels like I got my head stomped in with a boot. <laughs> he was dedicated to getting this done. He never missed a trip. He never missed an appointment. He didn't say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass this time. No, he just came every time. Yeah. You're all done, buddy. Open your mouth up wide. I didn't expect that kind of pain. <laughs> Nothing can prepare you for it. But you had to embrace it. I had to. I deserved it. Okay, Brian. Scale of one to ten. Is it creating more so than usual? Describe that pain. It's like hot bacon grease being flicked on you over and over and over again. You could smell the burnt skin. It's uh, it's pretty bad. As a rising star, Mark Wahlberg thought there was nothing cooler than being inked. Are we we're filming? Oh. Yeah, we're filming. Oh, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, right, so How are you, man? Good to see you. Sorry about that. He got his first tattoo at 12. Another four followed. Very Hi, well, very well. Come and have a seat. But now that he's a father in his 40s, he wants them gone. Uh, I had rosary beads around my neck. It was a said, God, and tr I trust, and across my uh, abdomen, and I had a family crest here, and uh, Bob Marley here, and a tattoo on my leg, and one on the back of my neck, and they're all going. They're all going, or they're all gone? Almost all gone. And the one on your leg, is that still there, or? Yeah, yeah. Can, you, can we see it? Yeah, sure. Yeah? It's, uh, it's going, see, you got, see some, still some scabbing left. It's going. It's going, yeah. And so how many, how many operations? That one I've only had about 12. But the other ones, all up here, I've done over 30 times. Okay. I waited for this one. This is the most painful one because there's the least amount of blood flow. And was it the wife and children? Was that a big reason to get the tattoos? That was a big reason, for sure. Yeah, don't want my kids wanting to get tattoos. And I've taken them a couple times to the, uh, to the removal process so they can see how uh, painful it is. A big thing which I've noticed is a lot of people worry about when their daughters get married. 
And if they're going to have a tattoo, if it's going to show, and if it's going to ruin the whole wedding because of these tattoos and the photos, which I think is hilarious. Thank you, Mel. Go and have a look at yourself. Definitely didn't cross my mind at the age of 21 what I was going to look like in a wedding dress. Gold Coast bride-to-be Melissa Jarman is walking down the aisle in November. Um, so what I've got and the elephant on her arm Ganesh, is the elephant in the room. I feel beautiful, but I don't feel as beautiful as I should. And I think that's because of my tattoo. So she's had a rethink and is getting de-inked. People just should be aware that when they're young, you know, if you're going to plan on getting married and, you know, you want to look like a princess in your wedding dress, to just rethink where you're going to get it. Want to draw mine? No, they don't. Why not, buddy? Since he had his tattoos removed, yeah. Brian's life has turned around. He settled down and finally found a job. Ironically, doing piercings in a tattoo parlour. Do you feel at home here? I do. It's a great shop. We have a lot of fun here. The guys are, are really, really cool. They are really welcoming when I got here. Um, yeah, we have a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a great place. Stop it. It was. <laughs> if it wasn't for my family, I wouldn't have had the strength to do what I did, honestly. I mean, I wouldn't have done it for myself at all. I did it for them. The monster's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I don't know what I would do in my life without them. They are just... They've been a really big strength for me. This is kind of the one thing in life that I can be sure of is going to always be there. And so that means each one of those memories and each one of those lessons that I learnt along the way will stay with me. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's amazing. They're beautiful. And that is one very, very cute rabbit to start off my Alice in Wonderland theme. And I look dishevelled, which is to be expected after like three hours of tattooing. See you later.